So Grow to Share started 2019 with Pacific Vision Aotearoa. Uh, we had a little test run and from my, my house was the guinea pig starting point where I started running a nursery as best I could, I gave it a go. And then I took my seedlings to my church of church families and I said, I don't have a beautiful backyard, but maybe if we shear out these seedlings and everyone grows in their own place, we can then have lots of gardens. But the main thing for this garden is whatever we grow, we need to share it. Mm -hmm. But it's grown and developed. We've worked with um, a few other churches, one in Pamua, and we, we came to um, St. Peter Chanel in Otara and said, hey, how would you like to be part of Grow to Share? which in a funny way is kind of describing a deconstructed community garden. So rather than the gardens being in one place, they actually go home to all the members. And there's no greater or bigger community than our churches. So they are a wonderful community that re meets every week. And there, here's a place where we brought it. And our beautiful Rita is our main champion for here. And she takes care of connecting everybody, checking up on everybody, and calling everyone together. I grew up in a family that work in the plantation a lot. My dad is a planter. Yes, I follow my dad around when I was young. I love gardening. So when I was approached about this project, I was excited. I love it because I myself here, I, I, I I plant vegetable gardens and also my flower garden. When Papa was alive, we used to do a garden, a garden, vegetable garden, cucumbers, broccoli, eggplant, bok choy, silver beet, mostly silver beet and taro. We don't buy any from the shop. There are times that we have plenty so we give it out, share with the people. Since I can't go out bending down to the garden anymore, so we don't have a garden now. And starting this Grow and Share program, we're thinking of our garden box in Frontier, where we can do our vegetable garden. Is it for us to Read and keep clean. Most of my time that I see my mom and dad, the well planted. We see in Ireland, they even they do the make the year when I have home. Also, down what we see here, and this is the day the, the home that we buy. They think about this is the one that we're going to grow garden and save money of buying invisible. When I hear about it, I want to uh, revise my uh, my experience that I learned more than for my mom and dad. I think I want to uh, try to survive the skill that we learned from mom and dad. We went through a few workshops. We went through composting. Mm. We went through. We went for a beautiful garden visit to the Auckland Botanic Gardens, which was our inspiration tour. So we got to see, set out in their edible gardens and their herb gardens, what grows beautifully here in Auckland. And the inspiration and the constant teaching from there will be adding to it. This garden box, which comes up to just above my knee, 30, 40 centimetres high, um, we're looking at, I think there was two metres by one and a half or 1.2. And to fill it would take a lot of soil. But we thought, let's be resourceful again. And many houses have branches and there's lots of extra live resources around us. So we filled up the bottom and then topped it with soil. And all of our wonderful families, how many families did we have? And we, we, we have over 20 families. About, about 30? Yeah. yeah. We about advertised 30. for 10 families for a church, just to put it out there. And we got such an incredible response from St. Peter Chanel that you can't say no. <laughs> You're like, the more the merrier. So mm. 10 families got involved. There were many hands building this box, filling it, 
and then they got to take their boxes home and fill it at home and so it's really learn here and then go home and do mm. it. It looks a bit scarce at the moment but it was actually full. We just finished weeding out the other stuff. We got cucumbers, got peas, silver beet. I think it's the resources really help and also the information as well. I thought it was a really good program and I got everything that I needed from it. For those who were partaking in it, they were enjoying it. They enjoy it. Because I think we're all the same as me, that I, I know I, I'm planting, but in the soil, down in the garden, down. But having the box, building the boxes was something that, something new. And I think it was new to them too. Yeah, it's the first um, time that I've been part of this and I'm all excited. <coughs> It's a new idea, like uh, boxing up, but, and that's how I find that my plant is uh, extra uh, grow better than uh, the, the one in the normal on the ground. When I have my box and I excited to, to do more, but now I, I still have my pellet, I can expand it, and I still want to do another extra box. Uh, it's, it doesn't waste any money, we can just get any vegetables that we need and then make food of it. I got tomatoes, I got lettuce, and cabbage. I can't ask for more. That's the only thing that uh, Islander people love to, to have with their meat. I'm very much aware in our Pacific culture, one, you, you've got to know your relationship to those who are with you and who are in the room. Because every single person there sits with their own wealth of knowledge. They've all grown up with their grandparents and family mm -hmm. who have their own way of doing things. So whenever we're teaching, especially with our Pacific communities, we always invite every person to share with us what they know. That when families in the church go, hey, I want to do that too, they then can run the program themselves. So it's, we want to pass it on and share it on so that the knowledge isn't stuck with just one group. We're really, because being a gardener is being generous, so we're taking our cues from nature. <laughs>